Welcome to Power 3. This will be your last lecture on evolution and the exam 3 will cover um, until here. So this is the last lecture uh, in your exam 3. So um, we last time we talked about um, micro and macro evolution. What are we going to talk about in this video? Basically, we'll talk about the critique of evolution or the rebuttal of, and also the rebuttal of uh, um, evolution. We also try to reconcile between evolution and, and, and religion. Last but not least, based on evolution, we are able to classify animals. So we'll talk about uh, the basics of classification. In the lab, you, sh you, will, you should be uh, going over uh, different uh, classification of animals in the lab as well. So, what are the critiques of evolution? You know, people don't like evolution, they find uh, these mistakes. It's not all, we do not, we, we do not, um, it's just part of the critique or so-called mistakes, so-called mistake people found in evolution. The first one is said the age of the earth and the age of the fossil. So in here um, you can see that um, the history of the earth is divided into this eons, uh, eras, periods, and epochs. So what happened is that the eon, okay, we have we divide the earth into four eons. You don't need to know the name of the four eons. Um, you can see that um, only the most recent eon is divided into uh, different period. Uh, okay, each eon is divided into different era, okay? And only the most recent eon uh, is divided into different period. So, other eon, these, we do not divide them into different period. We do divide them into different era, but except the, um, um, the last, the earliest one. The, why would we do that? Because the earlier the earth, the less we know about it. That's why um, the more recent the Earth, then the more we know about it, that's how we can uh, make more classification about the Earth. That's why the uh, period here is only, uh, it occurs only in the most recent eon, okay? And the period, they are coming from the era, the era in the, the most recent period. And then after that, okay, we we focus on the epoch. The epoch, we mostly study the epoch from the most recent uh, period as well, because that's because most of the recent um, uh, animal and plant come from the uh, the most current uh, period. For example, Jurassic. Okay, we all know that Jurassic Park, Jurassic uh, World. Well, Jurassic. Well, as we all know from the movie, the most famous, the most famous um, um, animal in Jurassic period is what dinosaurs. But most of the I would say most of the dinosaur already uh, dead nowadays. That's why we uh, focus. Um, to, we focus on the um, modern period instead of Jurassic period. How do we got all this uh, time scale? Well, it's based on the fossil. Dating of fossil. Dating of fossil doesn't mean that oh, you, you go out with a fossil. It doesn't mean that you grab a piece of rock and you go to a, go to a movie and dinner, no. It's not. It does. It is not. It doesn't mean dating the fossil. Okay, dating a fossil meaning that um, we we estimate the time of the fossil that exists on the world, uh, exists in the world. Okay. 
So how do we do that? How do we estimate the time period that the fossil was living on the Earth? How do we do that? Remember, uh, we talk about there's a different layer of the uh, in the Grand Canyon. Yes, I told you that if the uh, animal, if we find fossil in certain layer, then we can know that okay, this fossil was living in the period of time that sediment or the stratum is formed. But um, it is not the actual day. It is not the actual day. If you remember the um, previous uh, video, we show you that um, each layer of sediment or each stratum, it spans for several million years. Yes. So the relative dating method is not accurate. It only gives you approximate range in terms of several millions year. The so-called absolute method we use the uh, radioactive isotope. Specifically, archaeologists, they like to use carbon-14 dating. If you remember our earlier slides, in early, uh, or the lecture earlier in the semester, we talked about isotopes. We talked about isotopes, we talked about carbon-12, carbon-13, carbon-14. What's the differences between them? Well, carbon-14, it has, uh, carbon-14 and carbon-12, the differences between them is that uh, carbon-14 has more, has more uh, neutron in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the nucleus. Both carbon-12 and carbon-14, they have six protons in the nucleus, but carbon-14, it has how many neutron? Well, 14 minus 6. 14 minus 6, you will have 8. So carbon-14 has 8 neutrons. And that makes carbon-14 uh, radioactive. So what do you mean? What about half-life? What is half-life? It means that how much time does it take to lose half of the radioactive activity of that carbon-14 atom. It is approximately 7,000 years. Approximately. 7,000 years. So in other words, using carbon-14 dating, you can narrow down the age of the fossil uh, in terms of 7,000 years. So it is a lot more accurate, that's why we call it absolute method, a lot more accurate than using the, uh, um, the sediment layer or the stratum or, uh, on, uh, where you find the fossil. As I said that the stratum or sediment layer, they, they, are in, they, are, they form in several million years. But using carbon-14 dating, you can narrow it down to in terms of 7,000 years. So that's why I call it absolute method. A second critique of evolution, that means people don't like evolution, then they find mistakes, and then they, they give you the reason, okay, why evolution is not good, okay. The living fossils, meaning that uh, many organisms, they show no apparent change over a long period of time. We'll give you some examples of those living fossils other than birds, okay? So, a uh, nautilus. Nautilus is a good one. So, nautilus, 540 million years ago. And you can see that the fossil looks like this. And nowadays, this is the... Uh, nowadays, nautilus, they basically look almost the same. The shell of the nautilus is the same. There's no changes in the shell. And horseshoe crab. This is very um, obvious. Extend uh, horseshoe crab. Extend means present. Present horseshoe crab. Exoskeleton. That means the the hard part. Exo means outer, outer bone structure. Exoskeleton. It's identical to the fossil well, two hundred million years ago. 
you can see that the living fossil on the right hand side looks exactly the same as the fossil on the left hand side 200 million years ago so that's how they said well, there's no evolution look at that they all look the same so the question is what do you think to explain living fossil okay i don't i don't like the grammar here what do you think what that can explain or well, well, well that can explain what do you think that can explain that can explain living fossil so um do you have any idea can you come up with some suggestion how to explain the uh, so-called living fossil they are the same they look the same they look identical to the a fossil uh, many million years ago okay here are the rebuttal of living fossil critique so um the environment the um animal lift they have changed very little it's either no natural selection or very little or weak natural selection because the environment, those animals are living, usually they are in the uh, deep sea water or uh, they usually live uh, on the seabed. So when you when those uh, nautilus and horseshoe crab they live uh, on the seabed, in deep in the ocean, basically there's little changes. When there's little changes, then they don't need to change. They don't need to evolve to adapt. When there's nothing to change. When the environment has nothing to change, then their body, they don't need to modify their body to adapt the environment, therefore no evolution, okay? Very simple and direct uh, argument. Second, second rebuttal is that, um, yes, you don't see it in the fossil record, because the fossil record only preserves the skeleton, the hard part, the skeleton part. Soft tissue, we don't see it on the fossil yes all fossil they fossil they only preserve the skeleton because the skeleton most of the skeleton they are like calcium or other other uh, harder substances the soft tissue um, is already degraded by bacteria and other um, detrifol okay so um, we don't see the changes in the soft tissue and most importantly the DNA DNA of the um, present animal, extend means present, oops. So the extend means presence, extend means presence. So DNA of the uh, present uh, animal, they show big changes. There's the big differences in compared to the DNA in the fossil. Yes, we can extract DNA in the fossils. Um, that support the evolution at work. Yes, they although they look different, but the DNA they they change a lot. Remember the definition of microevolution is the genetic changes. And then uh, we don't have a lot of living fossils. We don't have a lot of living fossils uh, because uh, most species they live uh, you know one to ten million years and then they go to extinction yeah many species go to extinction but as you know that um, there are new species created all the time as well and well the truth is that all organisms they are actually to some extent we can call them uh, the living fossil it's just um, relative in terms of are you closer the in terms of the lineage are you closer to your ancestor or are, are we farther away from your from our ancestral animal we all preserve certain uh, ancient trait for example i already told you human being we have the pharynx and the coccyl bone pharynx is from the uh, pharyngeal pouch coccyl bone is the remnant of the is the remnant of the uh, tails okay
Uh, next one is the artificial selection of the plan and reveal uh, little changes. Okay, we talk about artificial selection in terms of breeding dogs and plants, crops like uh, uh, corn and wheat, right? So what happened is that um, when we select to breed uh, animal and plant, we should do inbreeding. Inbreeding, well, basically, we cross the animal or plant um, with their um, close relative. Okay, basically, inbred in a human's term, we call it incest. Okay, so when we do it in animal and plant, we use the different term inbred, meaning that we cross the animal or we or we. Uh, we cross the plant with their uh, relatives. In this case, when we do the in inbreeding, it loses the genetic diversity, which is not good. We need genetic diversity to survive. That's why in human being, we discourage a, a, a close relative uh, marriage. Uh, some country like United States uh, make it illegal to increase the diversity of human race because we need diversity to survive. Evolution is all about changes in gene frequency. This is the definition of microevolution, remember? Um, evolution works only when genetic diversity exists, yes. When if a population does not have diversity in the gene, then they do not. That means there's no evolution. When the gene frequency change, then that means there is a, a diversity. Remember the horseshoe crab? They analyze the present horseshoe crab's DNA. Um, it turns out that there's a big differences. So this is what we mean the change in gene frequency. So the last critique of evolution is that um, um, the mutation. Okay, mutation is the one that can create new trait, and then people argue that mutation is almost always harmful. You know, you know, mutation. Whenever we think about mutation, it's always bad. Well, except well in the movie X Men. Okay, they look so cool. Um, so we can see that, wow, this is really bad. Okay, two-headed uh, turtle, and then, well, I, I don't know how many toes. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight toes. Okay, 